Hey y'all, if you don't mind, click subscribe, and if you like the video, and click the like button, and we appreciate every one of y'all. Hey y'all, Fat Man Outdoors. Today, we, I'm going to answer a viewer request to do a video on something that uh, I didn't really talk a lot about it when I was trying to, to do the video of trying to remove a stuck breech plug in a muzzleloader. But on the back of some of these muzzleloaders, like this C CVA, you can see right here, that there is a plug that screws in the back of the receiver that holds all of your action in. And those have threads that screw into the receiver and it's a big thing almost like a plug like you'd see in metal water pipe or something like that or gas pipe. And you have to treat this the same way as you do that breech plug. You have to lubricate it so and, and keep it well oiled and greased so that it doesn't get uh, anything in the threads or rust on it and cause the threads and the plug to seize together because if you do then you're going to have the same problem as you do with this breech plug. You can't take the breech plug out to clean the gun if you can't get the action plug out to get to it. So I'm going to show you some different ways that you can deal with one that's stuck uh, and, and maybe uh, something that will help you a little bit to get one out if, you, if you're having trouble with it and, and maybe you need to replace it because someone's previously damaged it but it'll allow you to get it out so that you can replace it and your gun will still be serviceable and still get what's intended to be full use of, of the, the rifle at the from the time of purchase through the life of the gun because every gun is made to last a lifetime several lifetimes as a matter of fact the thing that limits a gun's lifetime is the amount of maintenance and care it receives. And that comes down to, number one, knowing how to safely disassemble it and, and, and reassemble it. But number two, knowing what components you need to check and that you need to lubricate and that you need to use rust prevention uh, chemicals on so that that gun will last you the long, as long as you're going to use it and then when you're dead and gone your kids or your grandkids can get it and say yeah this is Pap's old rifle he killed a lot of deers with it I want to hunt with it too because I really liked hearing the stories about when he'd go out and go hunting and maybe I'll catch some of his luck or maybe if it's like me you'll catch some of my bad luck but uh, I'm going to show you how to I, the, the, the way that I do it when I run across this problem and I run across several of them Every year, people will bring to me and ask me if I can do something about the, the breech plugs, but not so much the action plug. But it is an issue. It can be an issue. It's something because it works exactly the same way as the breech plug it does. And when you're cleaning it, you have to pull your jag out through that. So if there's any powder that comes out when you're cleaning it, it's going to get in the threads of that as well and could potentially cause an issue. Okay, uh, first thing we need to look at is the kinds of tools that you can use to take these out. There's a lot of different kinds of tools. Most of the, the, the fittings on the end of these are a hex key or an Allen wrench. There might be a few out there that are star and the new ones, but I haven't really run across one yet. Pretty much all of them I've seen has been a 3 16ths Allen wrench or, or hex wrench. Now you can use the kind that goes in a ratcheting screwdriver that's, that's, that you buy and you can get in these kits. It's got all different kinds of... Uh, uh, Allen of uh, the, the hex heads and uh, one way Phillips, uh, Star, Square, they got all kinds of different sizes for them. And these are pretty good if it's if you know that the rifle's been maintained well and it's always been kept greasy, there's never been any corrosion in there. Th these, these will do a fast job with those screws because they're not going to be stuck. Okay, and, but if they're stuck, th these are kind of my low end favorite because most of these I've seen out there that you buy are pretty cheap uh, and the metal in them is not so good and they'll strip. And, and the bad problem with that is if they strip and you do that and start trying to get it out with one that's not got good square edges and you could damage the hole inside of there where the, where the Allen Ranch head is supposed to go and make it to where you can't get anything to fit in it and hold so then you're going to be stuck doing a whole other thing. The next type of tool you can use is just standard old hex head wrench. Uh, now if you get good ones, okay, now this is just one I grabbed off the top of the tool bench. This is not so much a good one. You get good ones, 
name brand ones that that are good and strong and got good metal in them and they're tempered they'll they'll hold up they won't strip out and 95 percent of the time you put them in one of these and and, and you've done everything correctly as i'm going to show you in a minute the different steps you can take to make it where it works a little bit easier then you're going to be fine okay but if you get these cheaper ones you're going to run into that same issue that you run into some of those nut drivers they're made out of weaker metal they're not tempered as hard they're just not as strong and they're going to strip out so that's probably my my second favorite but it's to, to me it's still stronger than the nut drivers now my all-time favorite is is go to a park store or a place where you buy tools buy a good quality tool this is a crescent um, a hex head on a socket for a 3 h drive don't necessarily get you one for a quarter inch because if you need to put a little bit more torque on it then it's hard to do with a quarter inch drive ratchet you can do much better with a 3 h drive these are a lot stronger they're made out of way all of them that i've seen basically unless you go somewhere to maybe like and i'm not saying anything bad about them but some of the stuff they sell at harbor freight don't hold up too well crescent uh is is really good um you can get Mac tools. Of course, everybody knows about Snap-on and stuff like that. Quality name brand ones, they're not going to strip out on you as bad. And they're going to hold really well when you put them in a socket and they're going to fit. That's an important thing. That you can have something that might say it's 3 16 But when you go to put it in the hole, it just feels like it doesn't quite fit as tight as some of the other brand ones you've got. That's because they don't. They're not made to quite as tight a tolerance as some of the name brand stuff there you have to spend a little bit more money on the front but it'll cost you less at the end because if you have to go three trips to the the cheap tool store to go get stuff that just keeps ringing off then you ain't really saved anything but anyway so what i recommend is if you don't have to use an extension don't use it uh, most of the time though if you're leaving the action in the stock that's going to be a problem you're not going to be really able to reach it well uh, because it was really the system was designed to be taken apart with the little the little short Allen wrench that comes with the rifle. That's what it was designed for and a lot of people make mistakes and I'm going to show you the mistakes that gets made that Causes this little tool not to be able to do the job that it's supposed to be able to do So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at some of the things that people do when they, they mess up with their rifle putting that plug back in okay my number one thing that I think people do that that causes them problems with these with these action plugs is that they'll clean the, the, the bore of the rifle they'll clean the threads where the breech plug goes in really good they'll, they'll make sure to get lubricant on it They'll put it all back together, and then when they go to put the breech plug in there, they may spray a little oil on a piece of rag and rub it around in there, then just screw the breech plug back in. They don't look at the threads on the inside of the receiver where the, where the action plug goes in. They don't look at the threads on the action plug itself. They just screw it in, and then they'll put their little Allen wrench in there, and they will crank down on that thing. Okay, and then when they do that, and they crank down real hard on that, you're just really tightening the tie. And you, if you've got a good Allen wrench, you can really put a lot of torque on one of these things. Then when you tighten that down, you're assisting that action plug to seize. And you're doing something that's not necessary. Now with this one, it's already loose because I've, ha I've, I've worked on this gun a lot. But you should be able to go like that and loosen it. That should be tight enough. And just you should be able to... Basically take one finger because when you feel that bottom out and you will you'll feel it stop Okay, there's a stop point right there You shouldn't have to push down on that You don't need to do that because this don't hold anything Except for the spring that works the firing pin. That's it. That's all this does. This doesn't do, do anything to, to help the gun fire it doesn't do anything Protection wise all it does is just retain that little spring So when you pull the trigger, it'll shoot the bolt forward to cause the rifle to, to fire so don't don't crank down on that thing and then once it stops just feel like that you need to just push the time out of it now like i said if this little allen wrench will do its job you should be able to break that over with one finger it should never be more tight than that then take the short end out put the long end in and turn the action screw all the way out now remember these are under spring tension 
So I recommend taking it out after you've turned it a couple of turns and use your fingers, keeping your index finger on top like this and turning the unit. Why see there, you can see it pop up just a little bit. Then you take it out. And then after you've cleaned the whole gun, make sure that you look in there and look at those threads. Make sure there's not a bunch of powder or dirt or rust or anything like that in there. And if there is, then make sure that you clean all that out and lubricate it before you put the breech plug back in. Now, we're going to look at some ways that you can, that'll help you take that breech plug out if it's stuck. Okay, a tool that I rely on a lot is a heat gun. Now, a heat gun will blow out temperatures, if you turn on high, that are pretty hot. I don't know exactly what the temperature is on it, but it's, it's hot. But it won't get quite as hot as if you're trying to use an acetylene torch. So therefore, you're not going to be as hard on your finish or on the components of your action if you use one of these. You can heat your whole action up pretty good with, with this in a, in, a, in a pretty fast amount of time. But what you need to do is make sure you take it out of, of the stock, especially if you have a synthetic stock, because it will melt plastic. Uh, or at least make it so weak from being warm that it, it'll mess it up and probably cause your stock to end up failing or, or, or warping. So you don't want to do that. When, when you go to heat it, try not to heat the action plug. Try to heat just the receiver. You could put your uh, heat gun, maybe just clamp it in a vise so it won't move and hold your receiver in front of the heat gun and turn the receiver and try to keep the heat from hitting the, the action plug so that it doesn't heat because if it heats it's going to expand and it's just going to get tighter but if you can heat the receiver uh, some without heating the action plug then the receiver itself is going to expand and it's going to help you loosen up those threads once you've got to heat it up a little bit then come in with step two okay and i know you're going to start freaking out but this is just an example so you can see it well you can hit the end of the action plug if there's corrosion or if there's powder in those threads a couple of times and break that loose and make a little movement inside of there and, and that'll a lot of times do the job you need it to do. Now if you've got a brass hammer you can hit that and it won't mar it. Take it out of your stock, give it a couple of real good whacks with that brass hammer and then, then go to the next step. But if you don't have a brass hammer, a steel hammer is all you got, don't hit the end of your plug with, with a, a hammer unless you're planning on replacing it once you get it out because you're going to mar it up pretty bad. And, and, and if you don't care what your gun looks like or stuff like that, then I guess you're okay with that. But, but I, I try not to do that. But if you have to hit it with a steel hammer, put a block of wood against it and then hit that block of wood. You're still going to get what you need. You're going to get that impact and that, that vibration going through those threads. And you're going to get that plug getting knocked back and forth. So if there's any kind of corrosion buildup in there that's keeping the threads locked together, it'll break it loose and, and help you a lot on your ability to turn it out. So now after you've done that, now you've heated it and you've hit it a couple of times with the hammer, my suggestion is try the original tool first. Try your Allen wrench. Put it on there and, and if need be, you can take another wrench and make you a little or a small piece of, um, of metal pipe, make you a little cheater bar and put some pressure against it. If Don't strip it. If you feel like that it's going beyond the capabilities of this little tool, then stop. Get something stronger. My, and again, my advice is get you a good socket ratchet with an uh, Allen head in it that fits that real good and tight. And again, don't use an extension if you don't have to. If I'm going to show you on, on here. I'm going to put this one back in. Okay, now you've heated it, and I've still got this one in the stock, to, but I'm going to show you without it being in the, I'm going to show you with it being in the stock. So now you've heated the receiver, and you've tried to avoid heating the action plug. So now that you've got this heated up and you've took your hammer or your brass hammer and hit it a couple of times or your metal hammer and a block of wood and you've hit it a couple of times and you've got that where it's had some vibration going through it. Now again, put your little Allen wrench in there and put pressure on it. Okay. And if that doesn't move it, you can even take like a socket extension, put it in there and make you a little bar to break it. If that still doesn't do it, then Again, I'd veer away from this unless I knew that it was something that was going to come right out and wasn't going to be a problem. The next thing is to go to this ratchet. Now, 
once you put your your socket in there and make sure you got a good fit you got it down in there good and deep shake it down in there like this get it to go down in there make sure there's no debris or anything in there keep it from coming out now don't just grab your ratchet and just go pushing okay because more than likely if you do that and it's super tight you're going to end up breaking this little allen wrench because this is a small tool this is not designed to take huge amounts of torque but what they will take is quite a bit of impact quite a bit more than if you're just putting just pressure on it because it's it doesn't really transfer that energy fast because it's a small tool so you want you want to put the energy into it but not trying to just force it all in there at one time okay so what i'll do is i'll take another ratchet or small hammer something that's light that i can peck this with i'll take my hand and hold against the back of this ratchet to hold that down in there and i'll just tap it okay just tap it and it'll come and most of the time if you heated it and you impact it with a hammer then it'll pop right on out and as you can see now then you can turn it with this then then i would just turn it a, a little bit and if it's feeling like it's really tight don't just try to twist it out take your ratchet out and take the little allen wrench and put back in it and wiggle it back and forth a few times take it tight and loose tight and loose tight and loose to get anything that's in there crushed up even finer so that when you get it start to take it the rest of the way out it don't seize up your threads and start you off on a new process of trying to get it past where it's at right now. This is a no-brainer. Don't put your gun back together dry. When you go to put the action plug back in there, put some grease on that thing. It doesn't have to be anything special. I like the white lithium grease, but as you all saw when I cleaned my Remington muzzle loader, I actually used axle grease just to show that it'll work. It just has to be some kind of lubricant that will, number one, work against corrosion and rust almost all greases will and number two it won't water away so you don't worry about in time it's sitting in your gun cabinet all your grease running out and now you ain't got no protection this stuff won't water away and number three that it's got a good viscosity that when you put it in there you can feel that that grease is let, is kind of holding the weight of putting that thing in there and if it's doing that then it's protecting the threads of whatever you're screwing in and it's also protecting the threads that's receiving that thread so just keep those things in mind now we've went down the first rabbit hole which is it stuck a little bit and we needed to find a better tool to get it out because the tool we were using wasn't strong enough or wasn't working good enough it was stripping out or breaking so now we know what our best options are for the tools and techniques the first technique of heating and impacting to get that action plug out okay that still doesn't work it's still stuck i can't get it to move all right now you've you've went into i've got to come up with with a solution that's going to get this out or i have a gun that's going to be useless because a muzzleloader you can't clean properly is a muzzleloader you're going to have real problems with and having an inline muzzleloader the reason that they made them is because they're made to be easier to clean and easier to maintain than a solid breech plug muzzleloader. So this is what I suggest you do. Take your barrel action out of the stock. Okay. Now if you've got a vise that has rubber jaws, that'll be best. If you don't have one with rubber jaws, then you can take a, a nice thick towel, fold it up a couple of folds, put it down in, make a little like a, a little basket in there in the jaws of the vise. Then stand the rifle up. When it's out of the stock, stand the barrel action up and set it in that vise and tighten it up to where the, the trigger assembly is not in the vise jaws. What you want in there is the main lug for the barrel where it tightens the stock to the barrel because that's going to be the strongest point because on most of these guns, the, action, the, the trigger action is a, a separate unit completely and it just screws to it with little screws and you'll snap it right off if the gun turns in there. So that little block that's your main screw for your stock screws into the barrel. Put that in the jaws of the vise. Then clamp the jaws around it where it'll hold and it can't turn. Now, again, I'd use the heat gun in this situation. And again, I would heat the outside of the receiver more than I would try to do anything with the plug itself. 
get don't try to make it red just get it good and hot where it's uncomfortable for you to touch if you don't if you don't get it much past that you're fine you're not going to damage the metal of the gun so get it pretty good and, you know pretty warm you want it pretty hot you won't, don't want to be able to touch it much and then get you a small pipe wrench or monkey wrench uh, that that's got a good set of teeth in it good set of jaws and the, you'll notice there's a little knurled serrations around that bolt and what that's made for so you can turn the in and out once it's loosened with your fingers well now you're going to have to use that to put some serious grip on so now put that that pipe wrench on there and twist it and make sure you're going looser and not tighter and just break it loose kind of kind of give it this once you get it locked on and try to break it free once it breaks free if it feels like it's going to turn real tight all the way out don't try to twist it and just keep twisting it out because there's a chance you could wring the threads off of it and then you got real problems twist it a little bit once it moves if it moves spray some more penetrating oil on that uh, uh, spray some, some some liquid ranch or whatever kind it is that you like to use there's a bunch of different varieties out there and then tighten it back turn it back in the direction to tighten it up that it, and and then do the same thing again and just keep working with it. main thing is be patient but pay attention to what you're doing and don't get the jaws of the pipe wrench down on the the barrel action of of your rifle you only want to touch the plug itself because when you get to this point and you have to use a pipe wrench you're probably going to have to replace that unless you just want the world's ugliest gun because it's going to it's going to damage that when, that, when those teeth dig into it, it's going to damage that area where it's got that the serrations around it to, to cause your fingers down it early. But it, it'll come out. It'll come out. If you've done the, the things that I, uh, we went over right here, if you've used penetrating oil, if you've impacted it with, with a hammer and a block of wood or with a brass hammer, you've put several good blows on on the end of it, or and if you've heated it, and again, very important, try to heat the outside of the receiver, not the plug itself. You don't want the plug to expand, you want the receiver to expand. When it expands, it'll expand away from that plug and it'll give you a better chance of getting it out. Safety precautions. Glasses, number one. Make sure you got them glasses on because especially when you're swinging, those hammer, swinging a hammer at anything, you can hit something and a little piece of something fly off, hit you in the eye, and then you're damaged for life if you've got regular glasses that you wear make sure they're they're not shatterproof if they're not shatterproof get some that are mine are shatterproof that's why i wear these i don't necessarily wear safety glasses much unless it's with a grinder but wear them if if uh if you're not sure if they're safety if they're uh, shatterproof ask your optometrist they can tell you and you need to get some or you need to make sure you wear safety glasses whenever you're doing stuff like that number two you're using chemicals and you're using heat wire gloves I recommend you put a pair of nitrile gloves on and then put some cotton or heat resistant gloves on over that when you go to start messing with the, the chemicals you're going to be spraying on it to break the threads loose and then you start heating it up so that way you don't get burnt with chemicals and you don't get burnt by touching something that's hot but guys if you do these steps very rarely have I ever seen one you can't get the plug out of matter of fact I don't think I've ever seen one I couldn't uh, but anyway, guys, I hope this was an informative video. I know I covered a bunch of stuff and I was all over the place, but it, it's one of them things that that taking care of your gun is as important as knowing how to shoot it and knowing what ammunition you need to shoot with it. But taking care of it makes sure that down the road, if you need that gun for a reason or as an heirloom and you're going to pass it on to somebody in your family, then you've that gun's been well taken care of because these things are made to last forever as long as they're old and lubricated and and, and handled correctly so i appreciate y'all watching see you in the next video it's the fat man i'm gone